What's up, y'all? It's your boy eBay Fight Predictions in the building. I'll be doing your UFC, I think, Vegas 45 uh, full card predictions. Uh, yeah, man, let's get it, man. Really, really dope card. Oh, yeah, you almost got me. I was about to get into the card. Don't forget to follow me on my Twitter. Don't forget to follow me on my Instagram. I'm going to make sure. That's a part of my intro. Uh, my homie was telling me I got to start doing that more often. Uh, and also, subscribe, like, comment, share the video if you're new. So, yeah, let's get it. But, uh, yeah, really, really good card. I like the card from top to bottom. I mean, this is a really dope way to close out the year. Hopefully, I get to watch this card. Uh, you know, recently, my you know, I've had a really good relationship with my job. And uh, they've been letting me. Well, I, I wouldn't say with my job. But I've been kind of owning my job. I wouldn't say a good relationship. But I've been destroying them. And I've been forcing them to give me Saturdays off. But recently, they've... Um, I don't know. I don't know. They finally got some, uh, I don't know, what's the word? I guess got some balls. <laughs> they got some balls now to, uh, <laughs> you know, to fight back. So I don't know if I'm going to be working on Saturday. Hopefully, I can still watch the card. I'm not going to be live streaming, but it is what it is. Um, this is a phenomenal, phenomenal card, though. I really don't want to miss any of these fights, especially the main card, but uh, just great, great matchups. But let's get to it, man. Let's talk about the card and how I'm feeling about you know, where these guys are leaning and, you know, um, some, some good picks. Let's, 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 uh, let's get it, man. Curtain jerker of the night, Ronnie Barcelos versus, uh, Victor Henry. Um, I mean, I think this is Victor Henry's debut. Um, 21 and five, age 34, high to five, seven, Ronnie 16, uh, 16 and two, um, age 34, high to five seven and reach 67 so um the reach for victor is not applicable so i don't know but in terms of styles i mean uh victor henry's a more of a grappler than anything uh with decent striking ronnie barcelos is a really 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 good striker with uh decent wrestling i mean great wrestling actually uh his last fight tamir valib he just kind of i mean you know he started a little too late uh, i mean the second round was really really good for him but tamir i mean I, when i watched it I thought Ronnie had it, but I mean, when I rewatch it again, I can see like Tamir Valev had that Frankie Edgar mentality, man. I can't be mad at it. So uh, he went out there, did what he had to do, um, used his jab, fought from the outside, and just, you know, kind of outpointed him. He played the game a lot better than Ronnie, but I still think Barcelos is the better fighter out of the two. It's just, uh, it's just the game plan. And, uh, you know, if he didn't wait in certain moments, he probably would have got the decision and the nod if he would have just exploded. But it, it is what it is. It was a, lear a learning experience. And I think he's going to use that learning experience on Victor Henry's fucking head. <laughs> uh, I don't know if he's going to knock him out. But I, I would say safe bet is uh, Barcelos by decision. Um, he could finish this dude. But Barcelos, I don't know. Uh, but maybe he's due for a finish. I, I, it, it, you know, it is what it is, but I think uh, technically he's one of the better dudes in the division. You never know. Maybe he might have an ego trip and try to defeat Victor Henry in his own forte in the grappling. You never know. But uh, I think Barcelos has a really, really big advantage in the striking. If he wants to knock him out, he could. He really could. But, um, yeah, I think Barcelos by decision is a decent pick. But, um, yeah. Uh, yeah. But, I mean, it is what it is. I, I, I don't really see Victor Henry winning this, so it is what it is uh next fight raquel pankton versus macy chison um I, i'm taking macy in this uh all the fucking way i am i am completely done with raquel pankton she is literally i don't know what she's doing in there bro she i think her main goal is to not fight like i remember when raquel used to fight and th this is like i don't know what she's doing bro she's like stalling like i have no problem with someone taking somebody down and doing their thing but you know control time and cage time like just holding someone up in the clinch like dude you're like you're literally stalling that is a form of stalling you know you go to any grappling tournament or you go to any wrestling tournament you can't do that all right i know in mma you can kind of get away with that but it's like i don't know why stalling is a lot like i don't get that um and that's what she's done in her last two fights i mean she tried I mean, her and Holly Holm had a stall fest, you know, they both were trying to see who can stall the best, but, um, yeah, you know, I don't know, like, uh, uh, Mace Tyson showed that she had decent takedown defense against Renew, but Renew's a PE teacher, but I do trust Fortis MMA, I hopefully, 
they get it done. She does have a reach advantage in, uh, in here, five inches. So hopefully she can fucking use her jab and finish uh, Pennington. But I don't think she's gonna finish her. I'm just gonna take Macy by decision. I am completely done with Raquel. Like I, I'm, I'm over it, bro. Like enough is enough with her. Like I used to, I used to think she was actually a decent fighter when she beat Misha. Like that was cool. But like, but I'm done. I, after the Nunez fight, she hasn't been the same. She, she got, she got murdered in there. So. It is what it is. Hopefully, it happens again. Uh, next fight, Gerald Mearshart, the man, the myth, the legend, <laughs> versus Dustin Sulfitz. Uh, Dustin Sulfitz is a complete, utter fraud. I mean, he's a complete disappointment. He had that Rodolfo Vieira fight in his hand. He should have won it. He didn't take it seriously. Him getting into the UFC was a fucking fluke. He got lucky that the, uh, an another dude's arm broke. Uh, G Gerald Mearshart should fucking destroy this dude. Gerald, uh, I mean respected a guy i thought he was done after the comes out fight uh and then he comes back gets these next two wins over fubinski and uh you know machman murdov i mean two guys that had a little bit of hype i mean fubinski's hype died uh, like died when he fought muniz but you know he had a lot of hype because he beat darren stewart right uh, and people thought he was oh maybe this guy's actually pretty good murdov had so much hype because you know the mayweather connection uh, his pad work, you know, where it got super viral with Dewey Cooper, uh, just his boxing, his knockouts, you know, all that kind of stuff. And uh, a lot of people were really, really high on him. And uh, I mean, he, Gerald was just able to weather the storm, started outboxing him, outworking him, took him down and submitted him. Uh, he showed him that there's levels to this game and you got to wait your turn. So I think Gerald's going to do the exact same thing here. I think he's going to give Dustin that, that treatment. I think he's submitting him in the second round. Dustin is a complete, complete disappointment. Man, he let me down big time against Vera. Big time, bro. I was so pissed. Like, I usually don't, like, do this where I just completely, like, throw someone to the trash. But like I was saying, I don't like throwing people to the trash can, like, after they lose. Like, I, I, I'm, I wouldn't call myself a fucking, like, I don't know like a bandwagon ass fan but like i never was a fan of this guy but it's just in terms of picking I, I i try to stay a little bit loyal but like dude this dude just fucking gave it up man I, I maybe he might get some willpower and win this one he's still in the ufc i don't know how I, he's, he's he lost to kyle Dawkins. Dawkins is pretty good Vieira, i mean i don't know if he's good or not but uh we're gonna find out how good he is he's fighting pretty decent competition so i, I i'll give him a break there but still like gerald gerald's gonna take care of this dude man Ain't no way Gerald losing to this dude. I don't care. Uh, next fight, Sajara Eubanks versus Malasso Gato. Uh, Sajara is a really, really good fighter. But, you know, she is a wrestler. Gato is a submission specialist. Maybe the grappling might cancel out. But this is Ho MMA. Uh, I think Sajara doesn't have a ranking towards her name. And then Sajara fought a complete can in her last fight. So I, I didn't really gauge her skill. Gato does have a two-inch reach advantage. She's legitimately a really, really good uh, Brazilian uh, jiu-jitsu specialist. She has a pretty good win. I forgot against the girl she has. Uh, oh, yeah, you know, beat Carol Rosa, yeah. And then, uh, you know, fucking destroyed uh, Victoria Le uh, Leonardo. So, um, yeah, I, I mean, you beat a girl like that in Carol Rosa. Carol Rosa is one of those girls at Bantamweight you got to look out for. I think Gato probably got this by first-round submission. I don't think Sajara is really that smart, and I think she's going to shoot for a takedown. Thinking that this jiu-jitsu girl is not going to do anything off her back. And I think she's going to get her. I think she's going to submit her in the first round. Uh, Sajara's a good wrestler. If Sajara was smart, she would keep it on the feet and uh, just strike with this girl. But uh, I don't know if she's smart. I don't know if Sajara's smart. So, um, yeah. I, I, I'm going to take Gato um, by submission in the first round. Uh, next fight, Charles Jordan versus Andre. Yo, really, really close fight right here. I've been kind of like iffy on both of these guys. Uh, I mean, both guys have really, really good abilities. Both guys are, I mean, people are really hyped up about uh, Charles Jordan. I, I thought he was really good. I mean, uh, in defeat against, uh, what's his face? Um, yeah, Andre Feely. I was like, wow, this kid looked really good. Because when he beat Choi, yeah, Dohei Choi, I was like, I thought it was a fluke, you know? I watched the fight. He didn't look good at all. Like, his striking looked bad. He looked stiff. He looked like he had power, but, like, he didn't look good. He didn't look... Like, he just didn't impress me. And I, I was kind of like, yeah, this kid's going to get smoked by Philly. And Philly had a hard time with him. You know, he got dropped in the first round. And then Philly had to take him down and uh, win it like that. But Jordan's striking looked so smooth that day and looked so clean. Uh, against Kulabau, I mean, I got a sense like, man, he's not as good as I thought he was. Uh, that was a very, very close fight. But his striking still looked really, really good in there. And against uh, Marcel Rojo, 
that was a phenomenal fight. This guy's a really fun fighter to watch. I don't want to diss him, but um, he I felt like he lost the first two rounds, but his saving grace was that corner work he did right at the end saying, I want to be a world champion, right? And this, at the end of the second round, right, he's talking to his coaches, I want to be a world champion. That's what he said, right? And uh, he went out there and took care of Rojo. Now, Rojo is, uh, I think, a bantamweight, so, you know, but he's fighting another former bantamweight, Andre Yule, so maybe that might help him out there. But, um, yeah, I, I was... I wasn't too impressed, you know? I, I just was like, man. And then I pulled the trigger with Julian Arosa. A lot of people told me Jordan was this and that. And I, I do think the kid's good, but I just think it's like, I don't know. Uh, he's kind of iffy. Like, he's 50-50 sometimes. Like, it's weird. He has, like, that OSP vibe to me. Like, you know, he's good one day, and then the other day he's just not. But, um, yeah, I just was not sold on him. And julian rosa he he did me proud man that's my boy but he did me proud now andre yule on the other hand is a guy that is also kind of like jordan so they've both been like pretty big disappointments because people look at their attributes and their striking well more striking for jordan and attributes for you you're so long and rangy like he should be good right but sometimes he just doesn't you know doesn't get it i i thought he lost to jonathan martinez fight and you know his last two fights getting knocked out by uh arson uh, losing to what's his face uh Gutierrez I mean it, it kind of hurt him at Bantamweight and he also has that loss to I think Nathaniel Wood but um he is 33 years old he he does have more fights he is an experienced guy he knows how to use his uh length Jordan should just kick the legs but I don't know if he's gonna do that uh, he's not a heavy leg kicker he's more of a body kicker he's more of like a kick combination guy he throws uh punches uh, and then throws high kicks, like kind of stuff like that. I haven't really seen him like attack the legs like that viciously, like a Gutierrez. Um, he has power, but I don't know if he has like uh, punching combinations like Julio Arch. Like Julio Arch can keep going, 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 right? Um, I don't know if Jordan can do that. I got to take Andre Yule uh, by decision here. I just think he's longer range here. He's on a two fight skid, so I feel like he has more motivation to get it done. He does have a child. Obviously every you know, like don't get it twisted, everyone has kids, but I just I, I really do think Yule going up to one forty five is probably one of the best things he's ever gonna do in his career. Um I really think he's actually gonna do good here. Uh, I think the jab is gonna be well. I think honestly if I'm him pick matchups with a lot of boxers, a lot of guys that are hand oriented. And I think this guy has a real chance of being a, a legit dude at one forty five. Um but Jordan, I just I don't know. I think he's I think this is gonna be a learning curve for him. So um, yeah, I'm I'm taking Yule by decision. Uh, next fight, Justin Taffa versus Harry Hunsucker, bro. That's crazy. Harry's still in the UFC. Wow, Taffa's still in the UFC. Four and three versus seven and four. That is nuts. Heavyweight the division at its best right there. <laughs> um, I, I'm gonna keep it simple. I gotta take Taffa by first round KO, man. Just seeing how Harry just went out so sad to fucking tie to Avasa and then you know losing to Jared Vandera bro Jared is or wait am I thinking of, oh no no that's it yeah no I was thinking you know what who I was thinking about Josh Persheran or or whatever his name the guy that's up in the car I thought he lost to him I'm sorry my bad um Vandera Vandera beat Taffa right yeah yeah he beat Taffa yeah so um they both lost to Vandera I mean, Harry got a chance to win this. He has more fights. He actually has more wins. Um, but I just think Taffa's power. And I thought Taffa actually did pretty good against what's-his-face, uh, Carlos Felipe. I actually thought he won that fight. So uh, I, I think Taffa should get this done in the first round. First round KO. But, um, yeah, but his fight with Vandera was a very big red flag to me about Taffa's, like, you know, ability in the division. I don't think he's going to win a lot of fights. But, um I think Harry's there to get knocked out. I didn't like how he fought against Tai Tuivasa. He fought scary, so uh, I think Tafa should win this by first round KO. Um, next fight, uh, Matt Sales versus Jordan Levitt, the return of the Monkey King. Uh, this weirdo, I mean, Claudia Polis is a fucking man of the people, bro. Like, I was, I, I, it was crazy. So many fucking dummies told me to, Go with, oh, Jordan Levitt, Jordan Levitt, Jordan Levitt. And then Claudia went out there and schooled him, bro. She taught him a lesson. I was so happy about that. But um, Matt Saley's man, he's beat some really good competition. I know people are going to say, like, you are so horrible, uh, eBay. He, you know, he's beat some good competition. He's fought 
you know, he's lost to Bryce Mitchell. You know, no shame in that. Beat Kyle Nelson. Nelson's actually a decent guy in the UFC. Like, I'm all, I don't know, decent, but he's a decent Canadian, right? He has that loss to Shaman Marais. But he does have a win over Christian Aguilera. You know, I, I actually thought Christian was pretty decent when I seen him fight before. Um... I'm a, I'm gonna take sales here. I'm gonna take sales here. I, I'm I'm continuing to fade Jordan Levitt. He cannot strike to save his life. He is a grappler. Uh, he's a weirdo that he needs medical help instead of fighting in an octagon. <laughs> I don't know what's wrong with. I don't know why he talks the way he talks. I I, I really do think the dude is a psycho, and uh, hopefully he he gets put out of his misery. <laughs> I'm saying it. I, I got nothing against him doing the splits, you know. Um, but yeah. It is what it is. Uh, I'm taking sales. Uh, next fight uh, by decision. Sales by decision. Um, Dante Mays versus Josh. That oh, that bomb. Yeah, Persirin or Persarin or whatever the fuck you say his name. That dude, Rook Martinez's son, right here. All right, you got Dante Mays. I mean, he didn't do that good against Rook Martinez, but that's you know at least he beat him. This dude, Josh, right here, got a fucking. I mean, a gift from the gods. I think Chris Lee. I think Chris Lee gave it to him. My boy Chris Lee, man. Come on, bro. Can't be doing me like that in the streets, man. I'd be I'd be vouching for you. You can't be giving bums like this some passes, man. I don't know if he actually did, but uh Dante Mays has the reach advantage. He's actually lost to decent guys like uh Nascimento and Gone. Um he looked horrible against uh Rook, but I mean Rook actually showed that he's somewhat decent. He, you know, he was able to beat Josh. Because we all saw what happened that day. Uh, Josh is a complete bum, bro. Like, I am so mad I picked him over Parker Porter. I mean, I wish I would have just pulled the trigger with Parker Porter that day. Um, but, yeah, I mean, Josh is a complete fade all time. I don't know how he's still in the UFC. I would have cut him. Even if, I know I would have given him his, like, win bonus and his win check or whatever the fuck it's called. Uh, and I would have cut him right then and there and say, like, hey, we don't need you. <laughs> like, Goodbye. Go fight somewhere else, bro. He's he's contender series bum. I, I like the guy thinks he's. Uh, I don't know, bro. He likes doing this fucking spinning shit. Like he's so stupid, bro. Like I, I was so mad when he fought Parker Porter because he was trying to do all that bullshit, just getting himself tired. Dante Mays fights actually a decent kind of like technical style, and uh, I think if he keeps it simple, he should beat this dummy. So uh, I'm taking Mays by decision. Um, Hopefully he KOs him. Um, but yeah, man, next fight, Diego Ferreira versus Matsu Gamrat. Uh, really, really dope fight in the lightweight division, man. Gamrat is a problem, bro. Gamer. That dude is a gamer. Uh, Diego Ferreira is actually a decent fighter. I don't think he's trash. But um, I do have a breakdown on this, by the way. So I'll, I'll keep it short. I think Gamrat is going to stuff those takedowns. And I think he's going to get on top and just round and pound the shit out of this dude in the second round i'm um, taking gamma by second round tko uh, diego Ferreira fought i mean a lethal killer and uh gregor gillespie i mean if oh what's that guy's name the guy that just fought rick glenn diego Ferreira was supposed to fight him right i think diego should have fought that guy instead i forgot that kid's name he's really really like like he had he also beat leonardo santos oh i forgot that kid's name little white boy but, um, yeah, Diego Ferrer should have fought that dude. And he would have probably submitted him. Him fighting Matsu Gamera is probably the dumbest decision he's ever made. Same thing Jeremy Stevens, right? You get your car close, right? Easy money. Easy money, you know? Like, And now you got to fight Gamrock because your car pussied out. Uh, I feel bad, but that's what makes them fighters. They're taking the matchup. So I respect that they're fighting this dude, man. I really do respect it. You got to give Diego Ferreira and even Jeremy Stevens to fight him because they don't really get anything out of fighting Gamrock. Even though Gamrat's really, really good, they're just going to, you know, like no disrespect to them, but they might just end up being on his highlight reel, and it doesn't really do anything for their stock, even if they kind of beat him. Maybe Diego Ferreira, because people are starting to know Gamrat, but um, but yeah, I, I think Gamrat's going to beat the crap out of this dude. I think he can match him even in the grappling, too, if he really, really wanted to, but, you know, being with American Top Team, even though they ain't the best gym in the world, they're still pretty smart. Uh, Dan Lambert puts, like, millions of dollars into his gym, Unlike other gyms that, you know, don't have that kind of money. They just do it through hard work and sweat, like AKA. <laughs> but besides that, 
Uh, my point is that uh, ATT will have a great game plan for Gamrot. They'll figure this dummy out. I always not. A dummy. I like. I don't hate Diego Ferreira. I shouldn't say that. Not a dummy. He's a smart dude. Uh, but he's, his striking is horrible. I don't know how Pettis lost to him, but it is what it is. Um, but yeah, I, I think ATT is gonna have a good game plan uh, for Ferreira. I think Gamrot's gonna follow it, and I think you know he could take him to a decision. It'd be crazy, dude. Gamrot's stock would go up if he submitted him. Imagine that, bro. That'd be nuts. That'd be crazy. Uh, I would be like, yo, what? Uh, but yeah, I I'm taking Gamrot by a second round TKO. Ground and pound, basically. But it is what it is. Uh, Amanda Lemos versus Angela Hill. Really, really good matchup in the female division. Uh, Angela Hill's super, super durable. Um, she's really, really tough. She's an, a natural striker. Um, but I think it's Lemos' time. That girl has shown like, a legitimate knockout power. I thought she almost murdered her last opponent. Uh, what was her name? Um Maserat Ruiz and then uh, the Liviana Souza <laughs> knockout was pretty funny, but uh, I I don't think she's gonna knock out Angela Hill. She could if she does it, that would be nuts. But I'm taking Lemos by decision. I think Lemos is just gonna beat her up from range. She does have a one inch reach advantage, and uh, I think she's gonna jab her face off. I think the one two's there all day. Uh, Angela Hill showed so many holes against Tisha Torres. I mean, I was shocked how bad she looked against Tisha. Her striking looked bad. It looked like she was trying to be tough in there. She she ate a lot of punches for no reason. I mean, she looked amazing against Michelle Watterson and Claudia Gedalia, but I guess, you know, those girls are probably past their prime, and um, that's probably why Angela looked so good against uh, those girls. You know, Lemos is in her prime, and I think figuring out how good she is, and I think she's going to mess up Hill bad. But I don't think she's going to finish her, though. Uh, I'm taking Lemos by decision. And it's, you know, we all know Ho MMA. Got to go eh? Got to go with a decision. Got to go with a decision. Uh, next fight, Darren Elkins, my boy, versus Cub Swanson. Also, my boy, I really do like Cub. I do like Cub. Um, but I probably like Elkins a little more. But it is what it is. I like Cub, though, a lot. I'm not going to disrespect Cub here. I do have a breakdown on this coming out. So I don't want to go too in depth with it. But I think Elkins, I think that he's value here, man. I, I really do like I get it, Cub. He has the knockout power, the striking, but his Frank Edgar fight, he got completely dominated in the wrestling, right? He's always getting taken down. He hasn't fought a real grappler in a long, long time since, I guess, Pineda in his last five. Um, I, I just I just really think, he, you know, the dude got submitted by Max Holloway. No, no, no disrespect. But um, obviously, Elkins hasn't looked greatest against Derek Minner. He didn't look phenomenal, I'm not going to lie. But um, Minner quit, you know, and that's what it, it matters. Against Massar Bektik, he didn't look great, but Massar quit. Um, Cub Swanson, he didn't quit against Giga, and Cub is not a quitter. I'll give Cub that. He's not a quitter. He's pretty, pretty tough and durable. But I just think Darren, if he can just get his back and get those really, really good positions that Frankie was able to get back in the day, I think he's he's there. It's there for him. You know, he, he even got taken down by fucking Ortega. I know Ortega's like a great jiu-jitsu guy, but like Ortega's not known for his takedowns, you know? Like he got really dominated in the grappling area. Um, I think Elkins is the guy to get it done, man. I, I'm actually gonna take Elkins by second round submission. I, I think he's I think he's gonna do it. I think he's gonna get lit up in the first round. He just has to say too super tough. Doesn't get don't get knocked out, but if you can just get those double legs, those single legs, get that control. Break him with ground and pound. He's going to turn his back, and he's going to give his neck. And uh, I got to take take Darren Elkins by second round sub. Um, yeah, but it is what it is. Uh, next fight, another fight I have a breakdown for. Rafael Asansal versus Ricky Simone. This is a really, really interesting fight. Um, I'm actually super, super torn. Um, if, if Ricky Simone shows up with the mullet, instant fade. You got to put, put your whole life savings on Asansal. Um, even if Ricky does cut the mullet off, I think Asansao is probably the best dog of the year right now. Like, I don't give a fuck, bro. Like, he is, he can really win this matchup. Stylistically, this is great for him. But I just think Ricky's the future. I think Ricky's last few performances have been amazing. What he did to Kelleher, I mean, dude, that's crazy. But Kelleher ain't no Asansao. But, you know, I saw it live. I saw what Ricky did against Uriah Faber. Um, it was the most disappointing thing I've ever had to witness. 
Uh, but I mean, Ricky has has risen, and I mean, Ricky has fought Ray Borg, you know, former. I know he's a flyweight, but a title challenger, right? So I think Ricky has been ready for this moment. I think he's been grooming himself for this moment. Asansao is on the out, but I mean, stylistically, this is a great matchup for Asansao. You, you can't deny it, man. Grappling wise. And he doesn't have to deal with the striking, uh, you know. He doesn't have to feel like his chin's gonna ex- get ex- uh, gonna get exposed. Uh, I was stuttering for a minute, but um, he doesn't have to worry about that. I, you know, there is a KO threat, but I, I do think Ricky's gonna entertain the grappling no matter what. I think he's gonna take him down. His wrestling has gotten so good lately. I mean, ever since the Faber fight, um, yeah. But Ricky has shown that he's he he can deal with with really good uh, grapplers like Ronnie Yaha. So. And he beat fucking Marab. Like, I always forget that. Like, he beat Marab. Like, he's, like, you know. But um, I'm taking Ricky Simone by decision. Um, I really was tempted to go with the Sansa, but Ricky's my boy, man. I like Ricky a lot, man. Ricky's, you know, he's let me down one time, one bad time in front of everybody, but I never left him. I never, I'm not, I'm not planning on leaving my boy, so, uh. I think he gets it done against the Sansa. I just man, it, it does pay me to say that. I like I really I have nothing against the Sansa. I just kind of feel bad for him at this point because this guy was in title talks and could have got a title shot if he just would have beat Marlin and some of these other guys that kind of got past him. But um, he has a lot of wins. He has a win over the uh, the current champion Aljamain Sterling. He has a win over uh, Jorge Masvidal. And he's a legend of the game and deserves some respect. So um, hopefully he has a good performance here. But I think Ricky's going to beat him. I think I think Ricky. It's his time, and Asansa's time is up, man. I think it's up. I really do. But um, it is what it is. Next fight in the co-main event, uh, Stephen Thompson versus Bilal Muhammad. I also have a breakdown on this. Um, I, I got to take Thompson here. Uh, I mean, Bilal, honestly, uh, I, there is a part of me that kind of wants to see Bilal win just to see the reaction on Twitter because I know everyone would be fucking sad as fuck if they seen Wonder Boy lose. But I like Wonder Boy too. But uh, I kind of want to see that. I do feel bad for Bilal a little bit because he gets fucking a lot of hate. At first, he deserved it. But, like, at this point, it's like, okay, right, you guys can leave the guy alone. Like, you don't have to hate on him this hard. Um, yeah, you know, he's a decent fighter. He puts in the work. Uh, he's a workhorse. But I've said it before. He's not that great of a fighter. He lost to Jeff Neal. Um, you know, got lit up, you know. He there isn't anything necessarily special about him. He's a workhorse fighter. He isn't the best grappler. He isn't the best striker. He's just kind of good at, kind of good at everything and knows how to mix it up. Thompson is an elite level striker. He's he's really is up there with the top three best strikers in uh, in the division. Uh, not not in the division. In the whole fucking UFC uh, or MMA. Um, his distance management is great. I didn't think he looked as bad as everyone else thought he looked against Burns. I thought he had his moments. Just Burns was able to get those takedowns in the control time, and it looked more appealing to the judges. But uh, I thought he looked pretty good. He dropped Burns in the third round. I think if he had two more rounds, he probably beats him. Um, I think Thompson is just going to obviously going to have to improve his takedown defense. But, um, yeah, I think he's going to figure out Bilal. Bilal ain't anything special. And I think he's going to touch that chin, and Bilal is going to drop. Like, Lyman Good dropped him. Um, I think this is Thompson's fight to win. It is what it is. Um, I don't think if Thompson loses this, it's either the age or the wrestling is just not there. But uh, I, I don't think he's gonna lose this. I think Bilal is going down, and we ain't remembering the name Muhammad. <laughs> uh, next fight, the main event: Derek Lewis, Lewis versus Chris Dalkaus. Again, I have a breakdown on this, so I'm gonna keep it short. I gotta take Derek Lewis by second round KO. I'm not gonna explain it too hard. Go check out that breakdown. Uh, if you want more information on that, but yeah, I got to take Lewis H Town baby. Never been in Houston, uh, Houston, but got I got to stick with my Houston boy. I should have brought the oh, dude, I'm such a dummy. I was gonna bring the Popeyes. Oh man, I forgot to bring the Popeyes for Derek. Forgot to bring the Popeyes. I was gonna bring the Popeyes for the video. Sorry, Derek. Sorry, Derek's my boy. Got to stick with him here. Um, and yeah, go check out that breakdown if you want to hear my full thoughts on the main event and why I feel the way I feel. But yeah, it is what it is. That is. It for the full card predictions. Uh, your boy's out of here. Um, yeah, let's get ready for the fights. I hope you guys make your bets, make some good bets. Uh, and yeah, I'm out of here. Don't forget to follow me on my Instagram. I'm gonna, I'm gonna say it again. I'm gonna say it twice. Don't forget to follow me on my Instagram and my Twitter. I share this video. Let's get this eBay Fight Prediction Nation growing. 
if if you're still here subscribe like comment share the video tell you know tell me in the comment section how you're feeling tell me if i'm crazy ebay have you lost your mind you are you tripping you know but um it is what it is say what you gotta say uh i'm here for it and uh, yeah love y'all and goodbye i'm out of here and that is it <laughs> that is it <laughs>